Dear Mama, how are you feeling these days? I hope that you are starting to get out of the house once in a while. Maybe you can even go back to work soon. I don't want to sound cruel or pushy, but I don't think that you can hide from the world forever. Eventually, we all have to face up to our lives and do what we think we really need to do, no matter what other people may think. Please forgive me for not writing or calling for such a long time. After Toby's funeral, I thought that maybe you needed to put a little space between us. You didn't seem very comfortable with my presence, and the last thing I wanted to do was make things worse for you. I have been thinking of you every day, and I want you to know that you are still the most important person in my world. I love you more than life itself. Before I sat down to write to you, I was going through my keepsake box, and it brought back such memories. It's funny how years of living can be saved in one little cardboard box. Every time I pulled something from the box, it was just like going back in time. Some things are so vivid in my memory, I can picture them as if they happened today. I'm sending the box to you in hopes that you get as much from it as I did. Do you remember my old teddy bear, Mr. Waddles? He still looks as ratty as ever. I remember you telling me that I was terrified of it when Daddy first brought it home. That's funny because I love that bear more than anything in the whole world. When you were away at Grandma Moss' place, Mr. Waddles helped take the loneliness away. Daddy was there too, but his ideas of fun weren't the same as mine. At least he didn't ignore me while you were away. In fact, he spent a lot more time with me at those times than he normally did. Sometimes I wondered if you realized how close Daddy and I really were. I often wanted to share it with you, but something always held me back. I guess there are some things that can only be understood by a father and his little girl. When I picked up Mr. Waddles, I stuck myself with a rusty pin. Do you know what it was? It was the corsage for my junior prom. I wish I still had the dress you made for me. It was so beautiful. I remember telling you that I needed a special outfit, not just any old dress from the store, because Brad Thomas was going to be my date. Even you didn't believe that the most popular boy in the school was taking me to the junior prom. I laughed and laughed when I came downstairs and found you peeping through the front curtains waiting to see if he was really going to come. When he pulled in the driveway to pick me up, I thought your eyes were going to pop right out of your head. You were so proud of me that night. Mrs. McGilney told me later that you phoned her just after we left to see if they needed any last-minute chaperones. I guess you were dying to see your little girl dancing with the school hunk. I'm glad Mrs. McGilney had all the help she needed. I would have been pretty embarrassed if you were there. I remember how you talked for days afterward about what a gentleman Brad was and how you wondered why he didn't come around again. You kept thinking that I had done something to embarrass him at the dance and that I had ruined the chance of a lifetime. I guess you eventually realized that sometimes things just don't work out between a boy and a girl. Just because you go to a prom together doesn't mean you're headed for the altar. Speaking of the altar, I still have the gloves that you gave me to wear on my wedding day. I've often wondered if you secretly disapproved of my wedding to Richard. I know that you two never really hit it off at first, but you seemed to warm up to him as time went by. I guess you felt that anything was better than seeing your daughter end up as an old maid. At least I was able to prove to you that a 24-year-old girl was still able to win a husband on her own merits. Somehow I still think that you blame me for the divorce. I wish I could make you see that there was just no way that Richard and I could stay together. There were differences that we just could not overcome. The love that we had on our wedding day just wasn't enough to make up for the problems we had later on. Toby was the only reason that we stayed together as long as we did. Richard loved his daughter, and if he and I were having problems, he made sure he found some way to deal with it for the sake of his little girl. Eventually, we saw that there was no way to keep up the charade, and a split, no matter how painful, was the only solution. I know you felt that since I filed for divorce, the problems must have been my fault, but I really think that the blame has to be shared. I guess I could have tried harder to be the wife he wanted. Funny, 
but for all the love he showed Toby, we never saw him again. I heard that he is living in Vancouver now, but I don't know for sure. With Richard gone, Toby was all I had to live for. At the funeral, you told everyone that I was the one who killed her. I begged you to understand that it wasn't my fault, but you wouldn't even look at me. If Richard was paying his child support, I could have afforded a proper car seat. You were the one who dug out my old seat from the basement, but I guess I should have realized what a danger that little steering wheel could be. Now you are the only person I have left. No matter how hard I try, I seem to ruin the lives of everyone around me. Now I live in constant fear that I'm going to hurt you as well. If I lost you, I think my heart would just break. It's a chance that I can't ever take. By the time you get this, I'll have made sure that I can never hurt anyone again. Please understand, I'm doing this for you. I love you. Judy